All right, project for the day. This is going to be sort of a, a 3D printing project, I think. I have a relative who uh, spends all her time in a wheelchair, and uh, this is just a rough sketch of the wheelchair. So there's the armrest up here, and there's a couple of tubular frame elements, one that goes down outboard of the, I think it's outboard of the, the main wheel, and then there's another piece of tubing that kind of goes like that and ends up going down somewhere to the area of the front wheels and the, the foot rests and so on. I've got the proportions all screwed up here, but ultimately there is this um, area just forward and just below of the armrest um, and just clear of the the inner ring of the wheel, the part that the person who's sitting in the chair pushes on to, to roll the chair. Um, she has a, uh, a cell phone that normally is in a holster that hangs from a cord from the the armrest and it keeps getting messed up with the wheel. It's not a good solution. Uh, so I'm making kind of a plastic holder or a holster with a flange around the bottom and the side and the bottom and the side will line up with part of this vertical tube and the bottom flange will line up with this horizontal tube here and I'm just going to drill through and put a couple of sheet metal screws in to hold it in place and then on that flange is a box that's open on the top into which the uh, cell phone can go and it's a traditional flip phone not a smartphone so about three quarters of the phone will be down inside this holster box and just enough sticking up where she can grab it and lift it out. So my, I took some rough dimensions, very rough uh, when I was there the last time, but this shows that there's a one inch wide flange uh, and the flange on the bottom is seven eighths. That's due to the different tube widths. This is a one inch tube, this is a seven eighth inch tube. So I make the flange the same size as the tube and I figure probably three screw holes uh, going through and then there would be the actual uh, box here with uh, 3 16 inch wide or thick walls and uh, 3 and an eighth inch tall and um, what did I figure oh 2 and 5 sixteenths of an inch across on the inside and 7 eighths inch deep so, um, I don't want to spend a lot of time designing this, um, and so I'm going to use Tinkercad and do it with the minimum number of uh, elements to the design. So here's just a quick sketch up of the box, and I have to pencil in the walls. Alright, here's my sketch with dimensions added. This is for the basic box. So it's a uh, five-sided box. The top is open. I worked out both the internal and external dimensions. And since I believe my Tinkercad program that I'm going to be using, it's a web app put out by Autodesk. Um, I think it requires dimensions in millimeters, if I remember correctly. So I've translated those into millimeters and then that should be pretty simple because I can just make a, uh, a initially a cube and then change the dimensions to a, a three-dimensional rectangle and uh, adjust the height, width, and depth appropriately uh, and then build another rectangle or 3D rectangle of the same uh, proportions roughly and change its dimensions and make it negative space and put it inside the first one thereby making the the hollowed up part of it and then the other uh, element of this is going to be this flange flange plate really it's the plate which forms the flange along two sides um, so I've translated the dimensions from this block to this flange plate so it's going to sit aligned at the upper right hand corner. Here's the dashed line showing where the back of this 
will be up against this, leaving this 1 inch flange here and this 7 8 inch flange there. So really I'm only forming three elements, the outer dimension block for the, uh, the outside, the inner dimension block in negative space, and then this flange plate. So three simple geometric objects. And I should be able to align um, this point right here, I'm going to put with a circle, is going to align with this point here and I can just stick them together. So I'm still using Tinkercad for my uh, very basic 3D design such as I do them. But I use it fairly infrequently so I don't remember everything about it. But anyway, this is a free web app. It's just um, it's just Tinkercad.com and that actually allows you to do about three different things. It's a free web app, but you can do um, electronic circuits with it. So it's sort of a uh, electronic circuit, circuit simulator. It's a 3D designer, and it does something else as well. I don't even remember what, but you end up with this workspace, um, which you can, I believe, um, I don't know, grab tilt or something. Uh, I'm going to start out by making a shape, the basic shapes you can pick from over here. You can do a box, a cylinder, uh, these are negative space, and then there's a uh, positive space cylinder, positive space box, and so on. So I'm going to start with a basic box drag it onto here. I gotta figure out how to change the view angle on this. Ah, I figured it out. I hold down the right mouse button and then move the mouse and that can change the view just by dragging the mouse around. So I'm gonna make it a bit shallower of an angle and then using the roller on the mouse I can zoom in and out. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this object and it comes up with coordinates kind of of the base of the object and then also the height. So I know I want to have this be a width of 68.261. So once I hover the mouse over there I can click and I can make this 68.261. 261. Oops, doesn't it let me? Uh... I guess it doesn't let me do three points of accuracy. Okay. Yeah, there is a workspace settings button. Um, I'm going to keep the units as millimeters, but it does allow you to change them into inches. I'm going to keep them in millimeters since I've already got everything converted. Um, presets, Tinkercad, uh, I'll just leave those alone. Um, maximum width, 200. Uh, so why is this so darn huge? Yes, it's only allowing um, dimensions to the second decimal point, so I just need to round. So I'm back to 68.26 for my width, and the height needs to be 84.14. I'll do that one. I'll do the depth first. The depth will be 22.22. And then I have to click up here to select the height. 
which will be 84.14, 84.14, ta-da! So I'm checking my dimensions, 84.14, width is 68.26 depth is 22.22 oh that's not right I need to add an offset for that yet okay I've got um, my block there this has the external dimensions and now what I'm going to do is do a control D I think that is duplicate and repeat yeah so I've got my original block on the left and my duplicate on the right I'm gonna change this into negative space by clicking up here and I'm going to change these dimensions so the internal dimension um, front to rear this is going to be 22.22 and the width inside is going to be 58.74 58.74 and the height is going to be internally 79.37 so I've got my internal dimensions there I'm going to move this over here move this guy over here and I'm going to basically move this inside I need to align these in some way <laughs> I have to figure out how to do that I believe that the alignment comes by dragging a selection box around the whole thing and now that allows me to do some alignments and I think it needs to be aligned to the top and it needs to be aligned to the center front to back and the center side to side so that looks about right doesn't it let's rotate this to look at it more square on it looks correct and it does seem like it's aligned at the top otherwise it wouldn't show me that hole at the top so I think that is the uh, basic holster at this point well the current uh, version of this web app doesn't seem to match the help files but I did stumble across where I can uh, save designs I've change the specifications for the current design which to this point have not been named and it came up with a default name I've called it the jitterbug wheelchair holster and I'm making it private for this moment um, and um, saving my changes and it does that little thing which I guess it's saving it supposed to be in my gallery I'm not sure how to save this anywhere else I think you can export it or send to I don't know why it's taking so long I don't know if that means it's not done or what well I guess it did save it even though that wheel, wheel was still spinning it does change the name up here I think that means it's saved so let's go to the next step on this thing I've got my basic holster 
Now I want to make the flange plate. It's also essentially a rectangle, so I'm going to select, or a box, so I'm going to select the box again, drag another box over here. Uh, I'm going to change the color of it to something contrasting, like green, and uh, let's change the dimensions. So. I'll start with the height first. I figure the height on this is um, 103.36 ah. 103.36 Nope, it doesn't let you go more than four digits. 103 point um, four I guess I'll say so I've got that I'll change the width to um, 93 point six six 93 point six six and the um, front to rear dimension of 4.76.76. Well, since it'll let me do three or four digits total, I'll do that. So, I've got my flange plate. I don't know, it says it doesn't save, but uh, I don't honestly see how to save this thing. I'm hoping that it's saving it as I'm going. So we're going to put that guy behind this guy. I think I have to group some of this. I think I need to group this thing before I can align it with the other thing. It turns out that clicking just where it says Tinkercad will quickly say saving your work and then take you to this dashboard. Or you can do various things. You can take classes, you can look at your designs, etc. Create a new design. Um, yeah, so code blocks, I guess it helps you do some kinds of uh, programming work. And then you've got the circuits and then the 3D designs. So I've already um, got it saved, so I'm just going to go back with the browser back into my uh, design. And now I have to figure out how to group things. Okay, well this is the group button here. Control G, but I have to have the item selected first. So I'm going to draw a bounding box around that stuff and then group it. Okay, now it appears as a selectable object and now I can draw a bounding box around that and the flange plate and um, hmm I don't see how to align it well I found out that even though I had a bounding box uh, when grouping these items the bounding box was only around this part but it still selected the flange plate because it was behind it uh, so um, now these are grouped so I can move these around and also the color of the back plate had changed when it got grouped so now I have to get it into the same ballpark and draw a bounding box around the whole thing and now I can select alignment here and I want to select the top So, trying the alignment again. If I do this, it does the middle. If I do that, it does the top. Oh, I need to... It looks like it's not aligned because the, um, the box, the holster, is 
forward of the flange plate. So I need to align the the back side somehow. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Let's see if I do that. Actually, that's okay. I don't mind actually having the back of the box and the flange plate be the same um, in the same place. Okay. So, let's see if I can rotate this now. Yep, that's what I want. That's actually fine. Um, that's better than I'd hoped. I thought I would put the holster on the front surface, but it's easier to align it with the back surface. I'm sure it's possible to uh, probably you know, approach it a little differently than I did and still get it aligned properly, but this is actually what my first intention was, so I'm going with it. Okay, after doing a, uh, or watching a brief tutorial on YouTube, um, the way to select multiple objects without using a bounding box, and the bounding box is actually a pretty sloppy way of doing it, because anything the bounding box touches, whether it bounds it or not, gets selected. So holding down the shift key on the keyboard and then clicking on the objects allows uh, a more precise way of selecting multiple objects. And then, of course, they can be grouped or aligned. But I'm sticking with what I have because it is actually the shape I wanted from the get-go. So now I want to download and 3D print. I think that's what I want to do. I want to go to export. Um, oops, I didn't want to do that. So I go up here to export and I want to download it, which means since this is a web app, downloading means it puts it on my computer. I want everything in the design. Um, I want to create STL files. And um, <laughs> it did something really quick. Jitterbug wheelchair holster .stl completed. And uh, using um, Windows Explorer, I go to my downloads folder and there is the STL file sitting um, in the downloads folder so I know where it is on the computer. And I go into my Prusa Slicer program because I have a Prusa printer so I'm using Prusa Slicer. And um, go to File, Open Project, I gotta go to Downloads um, I'm looking for an STL file, so that apparently wasn't the right thing to do. I need to figure out how to open a project. Ah, uh, that would do it. Yeah, I need to go to Downloads. Ah. Maybe I have to import. That's probably it. Import. There we go, In, import STL files. And there I go to downloads and select the file I want. Open it and it imports my object. Now I have this thing sitting on its base. You can see it's a closed bottom to the box. It won't probably print very well that way. So what's the best orientation for this to get printed in? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that this may... Um, no matter how I do it, it's going to have an unsupported wall that it's going to have trouble printing. So I need to figure out how to get it to... Um, it can print them with a support structure that'll hold up and support the... Uh, 
the areas that are, are vacant or empty space, but I haven't done that yet, so I need to figure out how to do that. In the Prusa Slicer, I have to give it some extra information. I'm going to use a black PLA filament by Hatchbox, so I'm going to select that. And I'm using the Prusa i3 Mark 3S Plus, I think. Infill 15%. Yeah, I want this to be fairly fairly solid, I think. Um, and the walls are pretty thin, so it wouldn't do much infill anyway. Um, its position is definitely um, sitting on the bed. It's not up in space or anything. Um, so that all looks good. Well, looking at Prusa's um, website, it says that it automatically detects when support structures are required and adds them automatically. There's different types, grid, snug, and organic. And then the support structure is usually removable with the bare hands due to the way they automatically designed the, um, the supports. For example, if you try to print this object here, it'll add columns to support when it's trying to print over an overhang. Um, if you do supports everywhere, it's going to have a ton of stuff. If you do supports from build plate only, then um, that seems like it should be... So if I right click on the model and look under supports, I want to add a support enforcer, I think. So I guess that's just a box they've stuck under there, but I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to delete that. I wonder what happens if I just um, go ahead and slice it now and see what it does. It's slicing, it's still thinking about it. I don't see any support structures there. Well, it's added that box there automatically, um, which seems to go under partially and wrap around a little bit. I'm going to trust that it knows what it's doing, so I'm going to go ahead and... I've selected uh, support on build plate only, so it, it doesn't try to build a support off of anything else on the object, but there's nothing else to build it on since it's sitting on the support plate and the overhang is directly above the support plate. So I'm going to do a slice now. Oh, it expanded the build, expanded the, um, yeah. So this is what it actually, yeah. All right, I verify that the uh, G-code file is in the same folder that I told it to, along with the original STL file, so that's good. Okay, I've got my Prusa printer here. I've got the appropriate filament in it already. I've transferred the G-code file to the SD card and plugged it in, and the very first thing it comes up with is the jitterbug wheelchair Let's see here. There we go. And I select that, and it's checking the file. Uh, looks like it's going to take 25 minutes and 31 seconds to print it. And it's already heating the bed, so... Oh, I need to quickly clean that. Ugh. I forgot to clean the uh, bed before I started that, so I quickly did it before it got too warm. And it's quickly getting there. The uh, hot end is 
creeping up on the desired temperature. The bed is already a little overly warm. So it's going to back that down here, I think. Yeah, it is. Coming back down while the hot end is still warming up. Bed is down to 218 over 215. Okay, hot end is correct. Bed is It's just calibrating. Okay, and it is printing. You can see the uh, support structure there and now it's doing the bottom of the, um, the flange plate. And it's doing an infill. And I can see that the um, support structure is just a little bit away from the actual object. It's got a bit of a separation. So I'm going to go and do some other things while I let this print. and I think it's able to do the print in a fairly short amount of time, even though this is a fairly large object, because most of its empty space. Well that hasn't changed on the countdown. I bet that's in hours. <laughs> 25 hours and 24 minutes? I don't know. I think I have the um, the height of each layer and the resolution set up finer than it really needs to be. That's alright. I'm not in a rush. Well, I was having issues, so I um, changed the settings a little bit here, and we'll see how that works out. This time I've laid the object on its back, and I've also um, changed the boundary settings, or the perimeter settings, and the infill, and the layer height and all sorts of things after a chat with Prusa Tech Support. Even though they agreed that my original layout was probably pretty good considering my objective of having a minimum amount of support structure they thought I might have stability issues with it because the main object was only being held up by a narrow wall and with a lot of overhang and that that might cause problems as the print progressed so I'm trying it this way I was a little concerned because I couldn't make out from what was shown on the screen how they were doing the support structure for the middle of it um, but certainly with this setting I'm down to five and a half hours to print it so hopefully it'll get done today and it should have a lot less screwing around um, with the infill on very narrow layers like it was doing. So it's still printing the um, flange plate since the orientation I have now has it laying on the flange plate. 
I've already used up about half an hour doing that, but that is a big part of it. I'm still doing the infill for the um, flange plate. It's skinning over the infill now. We'll get to the more interesting part soon. Seems like it's got to be getting pretty close to uh, finishing the skin on that panel. Of course there's always somebody who calls. Telemarketers. <laughs> Looks like it's touching up the, um, the structure down there. It's going to use, um, I suppose, to support the the roof of the um, the actual holster. It looks like it's how it, how it's going to do it. It's building these little columns here, which are attached with a very thin. Um, can't think of the word I want. Uh, the word I was after was brim. Well, it's making another layer, so I guess it'll be at it for a while, but we're down to 3 hours and 51 minutes. Just now it's started to print the um, border of the actual holster. We'll see how that goes. I have to admit I have no idea how it's going to support the roof on this thing. Hopefully the slicer knows what it's doing. Well, it looks like it's going to have a roof on this structure. And then I think that uh, structure over here is kind of a breakaway structure. That's the support structure. But yeah, when it came to um, starting to bridge over that gap, it just drew uh, filament out in space and it sagged a bit. And then once it started putting uh, filament crosswise and everything, at some point it stabilized. Um, I have yet to see what it looks like inside once it uh, finishes skinning over the top of this. Um, I might have to go in there with a file or something and try to clean it up a little bit. We'll see. But I think it'll be successful enough that I don't have to remake this some other way. 13 minutes to go. getting there. We're down to one minute. 
there's some weirdness that suddenly happened right there. I don't know why. But I think it's probably going to be done after it prints this last layer. it is done. Get my lights up a little higher. There's that kind of a odd patch there. I don't know why. It may be that the underlying um, lowest level of the roof sagged a little bit more. So that may be just an irregularity due to it being less than totally flat in that spot. That's my best guess. Yeah, the bed is cool off enough where I can lift it up now and it's just a flexible piece of steel with a coating on it that's held down by magnets fingerprints all over it. That's all right. That's why we use the alcohol on it. And that's the support structure there and the rest of it. Isopropyl alcohol on a lint free wipe here. Ta da! Okay, how do we get this thing out? I'm thinking I can probably just push on it. Yep, it broke out pretty nicely. Now let's look down inside. It's a little saggy. Let's see if the fibers are loose down there. They are a little bit. Um, but probably it won't hurt to have them in there. They're not likely to stretch out or anything. Or I can try scraping that out with a chisel. Maybe I'll do that. Take the bold step. I'm going to go at it with the uh, chisel here, but I have to use both hands. That's some of what got chopped out. Now it's kind of a battlefield down there. I've tried sanding it a little bit. Let's see how that goes. I just wrapped some scrap of sandpaper around a handy slim board. I didn't want to go looking for the shorter staples, so I just put in longer staples and then pulled them back out to the point where the points weren't sticking through the sandpaper. And now I can hopefully go in here and clean that up a bit. Well, it isn't exactly pretty, but I got rid of the loose fibers and got them down to the point where... Um, the ones that are still there, I've, you know, quite a few came up and have been removed, but the ones that are stuck down to the next layer, I left. So it's a little ragged, but it feels a whole lot smoother now. It feels a lot better than it did um, in its raw state. So what would I have done differently if I did this again? Um, I probably would have not um, made this top plate the way I did. I probably would have made it so it had the back plate here and the sides and the bottom and then made the top here just a separate 
uh, panel like the back panel and then just glued it on. That would have been easier all the way around and probably would have looked just fine. And this obviously has a bit of a blemish here and I do think it's because um, there's a bit of a sag there. It may have been that this was a little higher and the print head was pushing it down a little bit as it went by. Maybe it was actually scraping a little bit on there. That could be. You now the final thing I need to do with this is verify that my dimensions came out right. Um, so this should be one inch wide and it is and the bottom should be seven eighths inches wide or three quarter inches whatever pretty close I um, it's more like three quarters of an inch now instead of seven eighths but that's because I didn't take into account the bottom thickness of this when I did my math it's still fine um, going up here the overall width of this is about two and a quarter inches needs to be two and five sixteenths inches and it is when I get the ruler right up to it and uh, this should be seven eighths of an inch looks like it is unfortunately this ruler is there we go seven eighths of an inch and it should be about three and an eighth inch deep. I'll mark it there. And that's what it is. So came out with exactly the right dimensions, except slightly short on the bottom because of my miscalculation. But again, that doesn't make any difference. All I have to do is drill a hole here, maybe a hole here, a hole here, something like that. Uh, drill and tap into the uh, metal frame of the wheelchair. And um, I have to clean this edge up a little bit from where I sanded it. But um, I think it came out pretty well. Very simple design. It would have been a lot easier just to make it out of wood, but um, the person who has this said, no, it has to match the wheelchair. And I said, well, I'll make it out of wood and paint it black. And then they said, oh, we don't want to have our phone touching anything that's been painted. It might come off on the phone. So it went around and around like that. Finally, I said, well, I'll just take a crack at 3D printing it. Okay, uh, four clearance holes for 632 screws. And one, two, three, four holes tapped and threaded for 632. And I've got these little 632 button head hex drive screws. And that's how it goes on. Want to see if you can get it out of there now? Pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm.